All right, so I have a bunch of different covered sneakers as you guys may know from the channel, but I wanted to compare these three specifically side by side by side and let you guys know some of the pros and cons of each of these max cushion stack sneakers right here. There are some things I really like about some of them, a couple things that I would improve on if I had the opportunity, but ultimately any of these three are really, really solid. I wanted to expand and do more than this, but honestly I figured uh, just a hyper focus on a couple of shoes was a better option. And if you guys like that in the video, then leave a comment in the comment section, what other shoes would you like to see a direct comparison to? Like I feel like these two would make a good comparison video because this is the Rebel Fuel Cells and this is the uh, Noble Blast 3s and, and they're both very, very good uh, and a lower tiered. But if you guys wanna see that or some other ones, uh, again, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, in this video though, we do have three shoes here. We have the More V4s from New Balance featuring that Fresh Foam X. An absolute monster stack of foam in this guy. I mean, just ridiculously, ridiculously huge, as you can see here. And these retail at $150, and then they weigh 10.9 ounces, for those wondering. I'll give you guys some pros and cons of that in just a second. But the next shoe is the Asics Nimbus Gel 25s. This shoe is pretty incredible as well. They weigh in at 10.5 ounces, so just a little bit lighter, uh, but unbelievably good with this Pure Gel in this midsole along with the FF Blast Plus. Then the more expensive pair of the three, but one that a lot of people use as a baseline for comfort, this is the Nike Invincible Run 3. This one weighs in at 10.8 ounces as well, so these ones are exactly the same weight, but the Invincible Run 3 features that Zoom X in the midsole, which is super beefy as you can see, full length Zoom X in the midsole. And just throwing this out there, for those that don't know the difference between Zoom Zoom X and then Air Zoom. Nike Air Zoom is like a tinsel fiber bag. It's like an air unit and you squish down and it kind of retracts back. Zoom X is actually a super foam, so it's a lot different on feet. Zoom X is much, much softer and squishier. Air Zoom is a little bit firmer, but the spring back, it makes it just really snappy the way that they've actually uh, created that. But here we have three amazing sneakers. And I wanna give you guys some pros and cons on each of these models. We'll start off with the New Balance Fresh Foam X More V4. Definitely a mouthful uh, to say, but this midsole is absolutely just gigantic. Gigantic. Check this thing out. I mean, this is a beefy, beefy midsole. It's really soft to the touch as well, very squishy. I'll tell you though, Fuel Cell is a little bit softer on feet, at least in my experience, than Fresh Foam is. Both of them are from New Balance and both incredible technologies. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to focus on these three. This model again costs $150. There's some things I really like about the model. Obviously, this has the most Fresh Foam in this model than any other Fresh Foam X sneakers. So really big midsole here. The traction is actually really nice on the bottom of the shoe here as well. And then you could see there's a little bit of a channel up the back and a kind of a little fork uh, back here. But when you take a step in these things, the heel squish is pretty insane. And then you can feel that quite a bit through the forefoot as well. It's literally like taking your foot and putting it on a memory foam pillow. And like heel toe transition is just all sorts of cushion underfoot. So traction is good. Stability is actually pretty good as well, considering how incredibly uh, wide the shoe is. That makes this a better option than a lot of like the super racer sneakers out there because this is a little bit beefier. It's a little bit wider, definitely wide foot friendly. I actually have a wide foot, but in this model, I get the regular version because they do have wide foot versions of the more V4s, but they're just crazy, crazy wide. So good news for those people that have really wide feet. You can get the extra wide version. You guys are gonna be super happy about that. But for me, even with a wide footer, I get the regular one and they fit wide. A couple of things I don't really love about it. I mean, the upper is just meh. It's not anything too crazy. No crazy bells and whistles. The tongue is decent. I mean, not a lot of padding behind it. The collar on the back is decent as well. Not a lot of crazy plush padding, but enough to get the job done for sure. But overall, the upper feels fairly generic and that's okay considering the price point is the lowest tiered out of the three at $150. The other thing that I would mention is there's so much foam on this midsole. It's just a little bit too chunky on this side of the shoe. When I put these on feet, and you know, I'm used to my 1080s to be fair. I love my New Balance 1080s. It's just the amount of cushioning that I really like. This one might just have too much cushioning uh, for my overall preference on a day-to-day -day basis. But the midsole is so big, it just feels a little bit bulky on foot. And if you don't care because the cushioning is there, then I, I totally get that viewpoint as well. But sometimes I'm like, this is a little bit too much. Like these are a little bit too chunky for my own preference. But if you do want that max crazy comfort on feet, these things are absolutely insane, especially at that value price of 150 versus some of the competition. Now to the alternatives I mentioned from the New Balance front, the Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainers, these things are absolute monsters. I absolutely love this shoe. I've actually posted these to sale as low as $135 if you guys have scooped these up. Honestly, really, really good deal. This features that Fuel Cell in the midsole, very, very soft, softer than the other shoes out here. This does feature the Energy Arc, the carbon fiber plate sandwich in between everything. 
These things are nuts. Very, very breathable as well. Uh, just another alternative if you're looking for something similar to that, but a little bit, I guess, sleeker looking and very, very squishy nonetheless. Retail on these are 180, but as I said, I posted them as low as 135 on sale. And I'll link them all in the description of this video if you guys are interested in buying any of these shoes. Also, if you want something a little bit lower, but some nice squish in it, the Fuel Cell Rebel V3 is amazing as well. Really, really squishy midsole on here because of that Fuel Cell, but a very comfortable shoe, breathable, lightweight, also, so if you don't like the overall abundance that the more V4 offers, there's other options out here that are great. Obviously the 1080 is another option as well, but these are two other ones that I would mention that I really like. Now moving on to the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25s. This is one of those models that really, really surprised me. I tried the 24s, I think I had the 23s at one point as well, but this is a cut above both of those other ones. They've definitely evolved the Gel Nimbus line. The 25th one is the plushest one for sure. Features pure gel in the inside of the shoe, but the midsole foam compound is FF Blast Plus. FF is Flight Foam, which is the ASICS brand. Fresh Foam is the New Balance brand, so it's obviously a little bit confusing. So they just name it FF Blast. And then this one's the FF Blast Plus. So it's softer than the predecessors. Very noticeable when you have them in hand, but when you put them on feet, you're just like, holy moly. There is some crazy squish in here. The heel is very squishy. You can actually just kind of step on the forefoot and feel that squish as well. Something you can't really do on a lot of Max Cushion sneakers, but this one has a lot of feel with the forefoot as well as the heel. One of my favorite things is the liner on this model is excellent. I love the way that they did this. I love the fact that they didn't change it from the previous version. Also, the stretchy tongue is ultra nice as well. I love that stretchy mesh tongue. It looks nice, feels nice on feet. Even though the upper is really nice, the midsole is where this thing shines again. Very, very nice. I would say that this does feature the weakest traction out of these three at least uh, out here. It's not bad, but it's just a little bit segmented in between, so it doesn't cover as much of the shoe as some of the other ones do. And the other thing is the pull tab right here on the tongue, it's kind of annoying the fact that they put this here. You could just cut it out, but it is a little bit rough. And if you're wearing these with low ankle socks, you can kind of find that a little bit of an annoyance considering the knit tongue is really nice anyways. So the little tag over top is just kind of like the irritant over top that you don't really need. It reminds you of like the shirt tags like when you're wearing a shirt, it just stitched on and feels weird. That being said, it's not crazy noticeable, especially if you have longer socks, you don't notice at all. But I'm just saying for the sake of the nice a tongue, like it, it's not necessary. $160 is retail on these, and this is the lighter of the three out here, only by a couple uh, ounces though. Incredible on feet though, and again, if you're interested in buying them, link in the description, I'll take you over to ASIC's site. I believe you could probably buy any of these and return them if you don't like any of them as well. Sometimes it's just worth trying something else out and something that maybe you wouldn't have necessarily wanted to try. Like this is not a shoe that I would look at and go, I need that, but after trying the previous version and then seeing this is a bigger version of that, that I was like instantly sold because I knew the other one was good. So excellent shoe, $160. And then an alternative that I would mention if that one is too big of a stack of cushion, but you want some nice cushion and a little bit more affordable price, I believe this Nova Blast 3 is about that 135 price range. And it's a little bit cheaper, so save 25 bucks. It's not as crazy comfortable on feet, but it is really, really comfortable. It features the same FF Blast Plus on the midsole, so obviously very good. And the way the design is, it feels pretty nice with the heel squish. I'll tell you, you do feel the forefoot squish in the Nimbus a lot more. And the tongue is a little bit different here. As you can see, it's fused. And the collar is similar though, the similar type of material, which I do like. But a cheaper alternative and one worth mentioning, and again, I'll link it in the description. Now moving on to the big dog of the group, we have the Invincible Run 3. This model, man, I still remember when the 4% came out from Nike. It was the first production Zoom X model uh, that they featured the Nike Zoom X in. And I was like absolutely sold on that shoe, but it was really more for performance only. And then there was the Pegasus Turbos that featured the dual density Zoom X with the React. But this one it was the first full length Zoom X shoe that really, really took off. It's wide foot friendly as well. I should have mentioned that about this one as well. They're all pretty much wide foot friendly out here, but this one is definitely wide, you could see, and the amount of Zoomix on here is pretty amazing. The stability is actually pretty decent on all three of these as well because of the width of the uh, foam on it. If it was too narrow, you'd end up like the Vapor Flies, which is a really nice stack of cushioning, but it's just so narrow, it's not very functional for everyday use. Even though the Vapor Fly has more cushioning in my opinion, these are overall more comfortable on feet and they're less expensive. The Vapor Flies are 250, this one is 180. Now I don't love the upper of the shoe. It is kind of weird, The I don't know. It's just like a weird uh, knit, fly knit material. Not my favorite, even though it's probably technically very cool, but, uh, but it feels rough to the touch and I'm not a big fan of that. The tongue is decently plush. 
The liner is okay as well, but the midsole is obviously what we care about on this shoe. The traction is actually really good on here as well, as you can see. But all in all, the cushioning on here is crazy. You can feel it through the heel squish for sure. It's such a fun, unique experience from the Zoom X perspective from any other Nike model on the market. However, this one is pretty comparable to the other ones that I've uh, shown you guys with comfort on feet. A really nice alternative to the Invincible Runs is the Motivas from Nike. This is a really crazy shoe. I did a review on these already if you guys want to go check that one out. But for a $110 budget shoe, it's the cheapest alternative to any of the other ones out here. And the squishy feel on here is nice, dudes. It's not a proprietary foam. It's not Zoom X or React or Cushlon or anything like that. At least it's not from the books. I don't know what it actually is. But it's really soft on feet. And the overall shape of the shoe is very, very similar to the Invincible runs. I mean, like they went with the same shape on the bottom, the midsole, as well as the heel of the shoe. And I think that is a good move. It's kind of like a takedown version of the Invincible run, but done in the best way possible. Like you put this on, you go, this is a really, really comfortable shoe. I actually like the knit and the upper on this a little bit better than the Invincible run too, but $110 alternative, I'll link in the description as well. Which of these three is the most comfortable on feet? To be honest, I mean, it's gonna vary depending on your feet and what you find comfortable. So obviously keep that in mind. There's something unique about each model that I like a little bit better than the others but ultimately I would say if I could only choose one of these three shoes I actually might go with this guy right here uh, it is just really really good overall the midsole was just exceptional and it really surprised me how squishy and soft this thing was on feet it gives the invincible run a run for the money for sure and if, unless you like the Nike branding only and you have all Nike stuff you have your tech fleece or whatever else this is an obvious shoe in because uh, it has the branding that you like, which I totally get as well. I have tons of Nike stuff and I don't have any Asics stuff other than a couple pairs of shoes, but I'm very intrigued by it and I want to wear it more and more. Every time I put it on, I'm like, dude, it's really good. So I think that out of the three, I would actually choose these. I do like the more V4s as well, but it's almost too bulky for my foot. I just don't like the crazy, crazy, crazy bulk look of the shoe, even though it is really comfortable on feet. But ultimately, I think if you choose any of these three, you can't really go wrong. They are all pretty unique and very excellent on feet. If you need the widest foot friendly shoe, then the more V4s is going to be the one for you. After trying all of them on side by side, I'd say that they all are fairly comparable on feet. I feel like once you get this max cushion threshold that these things have, you're not really looking for any more more squish underfoot than these can offer. I mean, any more and it would be crazy, but I think all three of these are excellent choices. And again, if you want to buy any of them, link in the description. I do get a little bit of a kickback and it definitely supports the channel when you guys do use my link. So much, much appreciated. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative. If you guys like these comparison videos, leave a comment on other models. Maybe you want to see me review other shoes that you want to see me compare. I've done a really poor job of keeping up on that in the past. And it's something that I'm going to try to stick to and do better at. So much appreciated for any comments you guys leave. And then if you like the video, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new to my channel. And hopefully see you back for some more content on my channel soon. All right, peace guys.